Praise God. God is good and he is awesome. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't feel that way. Sometimes we say God is good and, you know, he's good all the time. But our situations sometimes don't dictate it. And sometimes it, 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 it just things seem like things are going in a different direction. But, but praise God. That's okay. Uh, as we open up in prayer. I want you to really dig in deep and I want you to really seek God and I want you to feel his presence because I think that's what we really need. We really need to tap in and really feel his presence more than ever. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify and we magnify you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we do believe. Father, you reminded me of miracles and signs and wonders, Father. Father, I remember about 10 years ago, hallelujah, I was cooking in the kitchen, Father. And I was rushing around and my children were small and, 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 and the, where we were was small and we were just humble and we were just thankful and grateful. But I was cooking and I wasn't paying attention. I remember my fingers had caught on fire. I, I, I just was so blown. I was like, oh my gosh, my fingers, literally fire was shooting from my rear to the sink and I, and I, I put them under the water, but, but they weren't burned. You inspired a sermon that you allowed me to bring off call through the fire. And, 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 and I thankful for that Lord in the name of Jesus I'm thankful because you showed me that even though the fire was on me even though the flames were upon me not a hair was singed not not a piece of skin or particle of my flesh was burned you inspired that because you reminded me of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego when they went into the fire they were not alone they were not by themselves Christ was in there with them and they praised God while they were in the midst of the fire. And when they came out of that thing, even though they walked in bound, like some of us are in our situation, they walked out of the fire and they were bound no longer. They just had to believe, well, God is going to save me or he's not. But I'm going to go in anyway and I'm just going to trust him. And they went in and they came out. And their testimony when they came out to the king was like, oh my gosh, surely their God is the one true living God. And God showed me with my hand that not only was there not a burn, not only was there not the smell of fire, but even in my circumstance and in my situation, praise God, that he was doing the same. Just like in the times of Egypt when they were going through times of famine and, and, and it seemed like nothing was promising, God reminded us to have great faith like he reminded them to have great faith. Because all who belong to God, even in the midst of chaos, we have to walk by faith. As we are gathered here in tiny number because of everything that's going on. We have to agree, and I'm sure we all agree, that what we are seeing now in the world, not just in the U.S., not just in your state, not just in your town, not just on your street, but in the world, is chaotic. It's crazy. Some of us have never seen times like this before. It is mind-blowing. Some are fearful. But I think we all can agree we want to see hope. We need hope. We need to see that light at the end of the tunnel. God reminds us in Psalms 23, he says what? He says he is the good shepherd. He says that he is the shepherd and his rod and his staff will comfort us. So not only is he the good shepherd, but he is the one that is the protector. John 10, 11 says God is the great shepherd. He is a provider. He is a caretaker. He is the one that watches over us and he provides even laying down his life, making the sacrifice for us just as he rose so we could have, so we could be here today. The title of today's message, Now I See It. Not before, not last week, not yesterday, but today. Now, now I see it. Now I see it. Turn God's word to Joshua 1. Hallelujah. Joshua 1 9. In the Old Testament, Joshua 1 9. Praise the Lord. Joshua 1 9. And. Lord, can you read that, please? Joshua 1, 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Have I not commanded you? 
to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Some people go, yeah, I hear that. God said in his word, never will he leave or forsake us. But see, there's a catch to this. Yeah, God will be with me wherever I go. But what is my relationship with God? See, I can be in a marriage and my husband and I are together and wherever we are, or whatever situation we're in, we're in it together. But uh, depending on our relationship will depend on how I will get through this, even though God is with me. Amen. How we get through death, how we get through a birth, how we get through financial struggle, how we get through health crisis, depending on our relationship with one another may depend on the outcome or walk together. Sometimes we get frustrated and we get angry and we get upset with God. But what deposit are we making into the relationship? I can't go to Bank of America or SunTrust or Chase Bank and be like, why I don't have $500 when I hit the ATM? Well, all I got in there is $300. I have not deposited it enough to withdraw what it is that I need. Some of us are a little bit more flustered and angry and aggravated because of our deposit into the relationship with God. Now we're in a time where we need to be connected more than ever. We, we don't need to be like those people in the horror movies where, you know, they never check the batteries or their phone is almost dead. And then all of a sudden they're going into a dark place and they're hitting the, the flashlight. Oh, my gosh. And the light is shaking and oh my i need to make a call but my phone is on five percent no we needed to have checked and made sure we were charged up before we needed to have checked the batteries before were we prepared are we checking ourselves are we checking our connection and our relationship with god as we go along so when craziness happens when the unexpected happens when the chaotic happens we'll be prepared now, we can't be always prepared for every single little thing, but as long as we stay connected to God, he can direct us and help us so we'll be able to get through it better. Yeah. Now I see it. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? God is saying, listen, I've told you to be strong and courageous. I'm not just saying these things just to say them. I'm not telling you not to be afraid just to not be afraid because I've not given you the spirit of fear. My spirit is within you. I said, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Why? Because you're not in there by yourself. I'm with you. I got you. Just like a child trying to ride a bike for the first time and they're looking around. No, I'm, mama's right here. Daddy's right here. Your auntie's right here. Your, I'm right here with you. So if you, you wave or if you fall, I got you. And sometimes you may fall down, but I will pick you right back up. It's going to be okay. In times like this, when we're seeing all this madness around God had reminded me of Elijah, that fist cloud that was in a distance. He prayed first time, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, all the way to the seventh time. That number seven represents the number of completion. Seven times. And then it was like, wait a minute, hold up. I see something. Yeah, it's a, there it is. It's the cloud. There's that promise. See, sometimes we pray, but we are praying and we give up on the fifth time. Just like with tapping the ground. If you had tapped a little bit longer, tapped more. Some of us were, Lord, I've been praying 15 years. I don't understand. Lord, I've been, I don't understand. What do you, but what is that? God said to Elijah to pray and he prayed and he kept praying and he kept praying and that this cloud was right there. In the distance. Sometimes our fist cloud is there in the distance, but we're so frustrated. We're looking for something right here instead of something right there. I can't make it quite out, but I, I know there's something there. Something there. That promise is there. That light is there. That hope is there. You see in the movies when they're stuck in a tunnel or something and there's a teeny light. And it's like, wait a minute. I see something. They don't walk away from it. They walk towards that light. That light is a way out. That light is hope. Some of us are so frustrated and upset and, and kerfuffled and, and fearful and confused. We were all ready. But now, 
in the world and what we see and, and in the government and how things are reacting and, and, and what we don't have and people going chaotic, chaotic in this pandemic and people just hoarding toilet paper and all this other stuff and all this craziness are going on. And it's like, okay, God, what, 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 what's up? But God says in his word, what? What does God say in his word? God says in his word in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Because see, sometimes we, and I ain't going to lie too. I, sometimes I can be all, oh yeah, praise God. And then something happened and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I got to focus. I got to reshift my thoughts. I, I have to have that Philippians 4 mindset when he talks about, think about things that are admirable and lovable, lovable and, and praiseworthy. Think about things that are, 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 are things such as these because my mindset has to just refocus itself. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Ben, can you read that please? And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And the Amplified, it says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come in abundance to you so that you will, you may always and under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him and have abundance for every good work and act of charity. God will supply everything that you need. Well, some people will go, well, I need my bills paid off. But they don't look at the job that God pr pr provided. Or they don't look at that donation that God provided. They don't look at that extra car that came in that God provided. Well, well I want to be healed. I mean, God knows there's things that I'm going through personally myself. I'm, some of you know me. And I'm like, well, Lord, I've been dealing with this and suffering with this year after year after year. But <laughs> there's some things God has healed me from. So praise God. And there's some things that even though I'm going through, God has made provision so I don't have to go through it like I went through before. Amen. Stomach issues and stuff that I had, God has provided medicine and all these other things he provided. So I'm not going to the hospital like I used to. Praise Jesus. Thank God for that. I'm grateful for that. I have to remind myself of that. He's able to make everything, everything that I need. Everything. What, 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 what is God saying? Well, Mark eleven twenty four. We're, we're talking about that, that faith. We're talking about that hope. We're talking about trusting in God and believing for him for a provider. See, now more than ever, we run into the grocery store even in hope that they may have toilet paper back in stock. They may have that sanitizer back in stock. They may have those Lysol wipes back in stock. They may have them diapers back in stock. We rush to the store, we get there early, we stand in line, but when it comes to God and trusting him, even though this store may have been out of stock three times this week, we still go back the fourth time. But why don't we do that with God? Why don't we do that with God? Why aren't we trusting God the same way? We stocking up on wipes, but we need to be stocking up on, 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 on our Bible time and reading time. And I can't speak for you, but some people, they're getting frustrated and upset. Yeah, I'm at home and I got to be with my family. I'm going to be around. Maybe God wants you to spend some time with your children. Maybe God wants you to spend some time with your spouse. Maybe God wants you to spend some time with him. Because you've been so busy with work and the kids are so busy with everything else, you have not had time for him. Maybe this is your time to plug in, reconnect, get connected deeper, regenerate. So whenever you're going back to work, whenever you're doing whatever you got to do, you can go out there stronger, better, better, fiercer. Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. Lord, read that, please. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Mark eleven twenty five 25 talks about, he talks about uh, a forgiveness. See, there's some things that are attached. We tell them, oh, I'm, I'm going to ask God for that bins. I'm going to ask God for this. I'm going to ask God for that. Hold up, wait, but what about your motives as it talks about in the book of James? What about your motives that ain't pure? What about those people you haven't forgiven? What about why you asking for why you asking for it? Some people going, oh, I prayed for another child. Well, you can't take care of the three you got. Oh, I prayed for a different job. You can't show up on time for the job you got. Mm -hmm. 
I wish my husband would do this. You can't even take care of what you are dealing with your husband now. Oh, I want to be blessed with this money. You can't even deal with the money you got now. Pay the bills and be responsible with the little you got now. What are we asking for? What are we looking at? Are we looking at it also from God's perspective? And when we are and our motives are right and we're asking and we're talking, are we really walking and believing in it? God administered to me this. Several things we need to do. When we're talking about this, therefore I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received and it'll be yours. He told me first we need to recognize. Recognize. First Peter 5, 8 talks about recognizing that your enemy, the devil is prowling around like a lion seeking to devour you. You need to recognize who your enemy is. You need to recognize those that are in your circle may not be for you, pro you. You need to recognize what toxic things are in your life. You need to recognize the, the need to introspect yourself. There are some people... Uh, God ain't pleased with what you're doing. God ain't pleased with how you're acting. God ain't pleased with what you're thinking. And that's just a fact. God has ministered to me, Nicole. You know you shouldn't be thinking that. You know you shouldn't be saying that. You have to be honest. One of the things God said about David, he was a man after his own heart. God knows David was always just, he, uh, God, I'm angry. God, I am upset. God, this don't make no sense. God, why is this happening? God, I love you. But he was real with God. Amen. It was real with him. Some of us carrying this load around and we ain't real with God. He already know you can fool anybody, but you cannot fool God. You can fool yourself, but you can't fool God. He said you need to recognize. What does recognize mean? That means to acknowledge. That means to acknowledge the existence of something, to see it, the validity of something, to accept it, to admit it. That's what recognize means, to realize 2 Samuel 22, 33 talks about God is my fortress. He is my protector. Do I recognize who my enemy is? And do I recognize who God is? Who he is in my life, in spite of me. What God is doing in spite of my craziness. In spite of how I'm thinking. In spite of how I'm feeling. In spite of my distancing and disconnecting. In spite of the lack of faith or whatever I may have. What God is still doing for me and my family. Then God says, I want you to walk in affirmation, affirm. What does affirm mean? It means declare. It means to proclaim. That Mark eleven twenty four. 24, that is an affirmation. That is a declaration. I'm saying, look, Father, I know whatever I ask for in prayer, bam, because I trust you, because I have a connection with you, because I know your capacity, your capability. I know who you are. Because I recognize it, that I know whatever I'm praying for and believe, I already got it. Notice how it says received, and it'll be mine. And then I need to stand. Stand. That means that I need to take a stand, have a firm posture and perspective. I need to stand. Ephesians 6.11 says what? He talks about putting on the full armor of God. So I will be able to stand against the wiles or schemes of the devil. So I'm going to recognize, I'm going to have that affirmation, I'm going to affirm, and I'm going to stand. And then what am I going to do? Praise God. Then after standing, then I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk, and I'm going to walk, not just any kind of walk, but I'm going to walk in boldness. I'm going to walk in that a divine anointing. That means to move forward confidently, courageously. That means to move forward with, with an, an unflinching uh, a fearlessness and heavenly ordainment. But what am I talking about? Acts 4.31. Turn to Acts 4.31. Praise the Lord. Acts 4.31. Speak in that boldness and that the divine anointing. Walk in that. I'm going to move forward confidently. I'm going to move forward courageously. Acts 4, 31. Acts 4, verse 31. Ben, please. Acts 4, verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. 
Can you imagine? It says, and when they had prayed, the place where they gathered was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Can you imagine in a time like this? You think you just showed up for prayer service, and you're like, well, I'm going to go to prayer service. I really need prayer. I'm going to pray for Sister uh, Benita, and I'm going to pray for Brother Mark. And, and you go in there, and the prayers are so powerful. It's like, what is, is it an earthquake? What's happening? The prayers are so, so on point. It is lit in that place like Christmas Day that the building shook. And they were all cohesive. They were all on one unit. They were unified, and they spoke with godly boldness. 2 Corinthians 3.12, and I'll read this. 2 Corinthians 3.12 says, Therefore, having such a hope, we will use great boldness in our speech. See, sometimes we'll tell people off. Oh, well, you know, such and such and such and so. But see, when the enemy come, we like this. Elijah spoke with boldness before the prophets, and he was like, oh, let the fire fall. But then when Jezebel came, it was like, oh. We need to be bold 24-7 against every enemy. Mm -hmm. Every single enemy. So we walk in boldness with the divine authority. And lastly, we need to speak. Speak. Speak with authority from and in Christ Jesus. Speak with authority in and from Christ Jesus. We need to articulate. We need to voice. We need to verbalize. In and with power. Godly power and control and command in the situation that we're at. 1 John 4.4. 4. 1 John 4.4 4 says this. 1 John 4.4 4 says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Overcome what? Overcome who? Those people that are of the world. Those people who are against you. Those people who are disobedient. And they're out there getting lit all the time and, and drugged up and liquored up and whatever. Those people, those gossipers, those that are unrighteous, those who are moral. God says, listen, you have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the spirit who is already in the world. We have to remind ourselves when we speak. See, the enemy want to combobulate our mind and get us frustrated looking at our circumstances, looking in our medicine cabinet, looking at the pain that we're feeling, looking at situations that are frustrating. He does this because, see, if I have my mind right, then I can pray right, I can connect with God right, and I can really receive the peace of God that surpasses man's understanding, and I can walk in joy. But if my mind ain't right, if my mind is so filled with other stuff that I can't even get connected with God, that I'm so angry with him, I don't want to even talk to him. That I do everything else and I pinch off a little time with God and my relationship isn't as close as it used to be or I'm not getting connected like I need to be. How can I operate the way I'm supposed to? How can I speak with authority? How can I walk in that boldness? How can I stand firm? How can I hear from God? There's people, oh, I, 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 I don't know what God sounds like. Well, do you spend time with him? Well, yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I read a couple of scriptures every day. What do you do when you go to work five days a week when you were working? You didn't go, well, you know, I, I worked two hours today. Well, you're supposed to be there for eight hours. I'm not a part-time wife. I'm a full-time wife. Amen. I have to put everything into this relationship to make it work all the time. I just don't communicate with my husband once every day or once every other day or three times a month. Or just when I need something. Or when I'm just frustrated with him. No, we work on this thing all the time. And does it work all the time? No, but we still keep working at it. And that's what we have to do with God. Constantly be pushing. Constantly be working at it. In this world of what is going on. Virus or whatever is happening. It's time to elevate your game. People tell myself, you got your game face on, you, 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 you know, you, you, you bring a game, what kind of game you bring in? It's time to elevate your game. 
The enemy is used to how you act. He's used to how you think. He's used to how you react. He's used to you doing things a certain way. <laughs> but today, today is elevation time. Today is when you make the decision to get more connected with God, to do more reading, to do more meditating. Today is the time when you say, you know what, my game plan is changing. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to pray. I'm going to elevate my prayer time with him. I'm going to fast. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to be totally praised up. I'm going to have the joy of the Lord that strengthens me. I'm, I'm going to break through that smile, Father. I, I, I got to give that Shabbat. I got to give that total praise. I, I got to do something. To break through this fog that I'm in because the enemy wants to keep it all foggy and cloudy. And anytime you're in fog, what you got to do? You got to put them fog lights on. You can barely see in front of you. You're driving slow, but you get through to where you got to go. You do what you need to do. Today, in wartime, what do you do? You act like it's wartime. You do the things that you do in wartime. Amen. You increase that time and that study with God in wartime. We don't have time to be doing pity party time. We don't have time to be all sad and, and oh, well, God, and, well, hi, Lord, I just, no, no, no. We, we don't have the time to do that. Now we see what is literally, physically going on in the earth. We do not have time to be biting our fingernails and, well, Lord, I, I just don't know. Well, they're not having church, so you better break open your Bible, even if you're having church by yourself. Whatever you got to do. The enemy, it says he will fool God's elect, his chosen, if he could. Make you think that you churched enough, praised up enough. We in the world but we're not supposed to look like the world. We're not supposed to be of the world. We're not supposed to be doing the things the world is doing. Because once we start doing it and the enemy get a finger hold, then he get a hand hold, and then he get an arm hold, and next thing you know, he got your whole body, and then he got your whole relationship, and then he has your whole family. All he needs is an entryway. You know, like in those movies, how they're talking about the vampire can't enter unless you give him access. What are we giving the enemy access to? Amen. What are we giving him access to in our relationships and our finances? And, and what, what are we doing? He ain't just going to come in, well, I'm going to take this. He's going to take everything that has value and keep on taking and keep on taking. Paul, when he was bit by the snake, he just didn't fall to the ground. Oh, I'm bit over. Yeah, I'm sure it hurt. But I got to shake that thing off because there's things I got to do. When they beat Paul and, 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 tore, and snatched him out of the town, what did he do? Uh, God allowed him to shake that stuff off. They thought he was dead. And he marched right back into the same town that beat him down until God said it was time to leave. We don't have time to do the things that we're doing. Time is of the essence. The enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy. He is here to steal, kill, and destroy you, your family, your marriage, your relationships, your finances, your job, your livelihood, your children. He is don't care nothing about you. He never has. And we think that we got time or we think that we're doing enough and it's just not enough. There's much work to do. There's things to water, seeds to plant, a harvest to protect. It says, what well, the harvest is plenty, but what is few? Us. The workers are few. There's so many things we're talking about we want and we want to reach, but we ain't doing what we need to reach. I can't keep talking about the top of the steps, but I'm not even willing to get on the first step. My knees hurt, but if I need to go to bed, then I'm just... Lord, it's going to take me a minute, but I'm going to walk up every single step to get there. And sometimes it's painful, but I will get there. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that you're reminding us, Father, in these times that are perilous, Father God, that we may be persecuted, Father. We may be knocked down. We're not destroyed. We're not abandoned. You're here. Father, you're here covering us, helping us, blessing us. And, Father, some of us are... It's, it's a little rough. It's a little shaky. But Father, but you, but God, 
Cover us, cover our family, cover our children, cover our relationships, cover our marriages, cover our finances. Father, some of us who ain't working, Father God, cover the bills that need to be paid. Lord God, you see the mortgages, you see the rent, you see the car notes, you see the insurances, you see the health situation, you see what the doctors have said, you see the test results. Father, we submit it to you. We humble ourselves before us, before you. Every sin, every shortcoming, every missing it, every transgression, we ask for forgiveness of it. Father, generational sins all the way back to the very beginning of us, Father, we lay it before you. Forgive us. And Father, we forgive those no matter the hurt, the persecution, the abandonment, the betrayal. Father, we, we forgive them. Father, take too much time to, to, to hate on and to be bitter and nasty. Father, I, we don't want to have that on our plate. Father, we just kind of scrape that off. And we decide to move forward and we forgive what they have done to our families and generations of us back to the very beginning. Father, help us. Strengthen us. Pour into us. Keep us. Some of us, Father, aren't making good decisions. Some of us and our family, we see the decisions that they're making, whether it's a children or a spouse or an aunt or an uncle or a nephew or, or whoever it is. Maybe it's a mother or whatever, Father, we submit it to you. Help them. Help them. The fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. May it availeth much in their lives. Father, all you need is two or more to come together in agreement. And Father, we are praying in agreement today. And we're believing today. And we're trusting you today. As the man said, Father, I believe. But help my unbelief. Help that part of me that just can't get over that hump. That, that can't see past that part. Father, clear the way and part that fog so I see and I receive. And I'm not always talking negative and I'm not always talking disbelief and I'm not always talking about uncertainty. But Father, I'm talking about I believe, I receive. I'm talking in the manner of, Father, I know you got it. I'm talking in the manner of, Lord, Father God, you see the need. I know you're going to supply it. Father, you see, Father, what my body is doing. Father, you know what I need to do. Father, I believe you're going to heal it. It's done. It's paid for. It's signed. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God, and we give you the glory, Father. As this week is beginning, Father, just fill us up. Oh, fill us up. Some of us in that water sinking that have trust you and stepped out of the boat. Father, lift us up like you lift up Peter, Father, so we can walk on the water to dry land. Walk to our promise. Father, you've gotten us through. You're separating the seas. You're parting them, Father. And not any one of your people, Father, that wasn't spared, Father. You allow them to walk across on dry land. Let us walk across to our promise. Bless us. Oh, Father, we just say thank you. You're awesome. Keep us. Oh, Father, we're so, so grateful. Speak to our immune systems, Lord God. Viruses, colds, flus, bad bacteria, whatever it may be going on in the atmosphere, in the spirit, and in the natural the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. Whatever the enemy, whatever weapon, whatever uh, agenda, whatever opportunity, whatever spirit or vessel, anything generational, any transference from the enemy's kingdom, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. Father, you said no weapon formed against us will succeed. You said your people will lack no good thing. You, we will have more than enough. And we receive that in every area of our life. And we thank you for it today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.